good evening and respected chair persons and <clears throat> thank you for your kind introduction and i would like to thank organizers manoj chavla dr banshi dr arvin and all others for giving this opportunity i would like to, actually i would like to uh, thank both dr sandeep julka and sanjeev shah for giving me a nice platform to talk about though it's uh, chairman's job i just thought that i can make some points what dr Sanjeev Shah has made very important points that he has made. That is fear of hypoglycemia. Fear of hypoglycemia. That is number one. And failure to titrate. That's the second point he said. And then, and fear of weight gain. And vulnerable population. How we should manage. And also, the dilemma amongst HCPs. Those who are trying to treat diabetes. And also the difficulties actually. You know that though the uh, the RCT says that the titration period is about six months, but actually, what we do in practice is about two to three weeks, and that's what Dr. Sanjeev Shah has clearly indicated that by 40th day we can fix the dose. I think this uh, uh, the talk I'm going to give on a, a special insulin. It's a glargine, but it's a higher dose of glargine per ml that is 300 IU, what we call 300 IU. And then, and this insulin probably fits into all that what Dr. Sanjeev Shah has said. That, and thank you, Dr. Sanjeev Shah, that for giving me the uh, inputs like that. Actually, now as I said, that uh, you know, um, we need to have an efficacious insulin where it can reduce the risk of hypoglycemia, and especially the titration period should be smooth, and then it should also be able to reduce the the nocturnal hypoglycemia and it should also have be safe in high risk population and probably low risk compared to the other formulations that already the earlier speakers have said and flexibility you know in this busy world of people there's a flexibility of the timing of the dose is an important thing and if the injection is going to be that is as you inject the insulin into the subcutaneous tissue if the the pain is quite less then it's a very good insulin so that you can improve the adherence to the insulin that's a very very important thing that we can do now this is the evolution of various insulin the poor man's um, basal insulin what we had about 30 35 years ago was nph that we have been using last 35 years i've been practicing initially we had only nph as a basal insulin then we got lantas which has got a slightly higher peak but later on in the last 2 to 3 years we got some very nice insulin in the form of deglutec and as well as glargin u300 both are peakless insulin so you can see that it's a peakless insulin why we should think about peakless insulin is that when you have a peakless insulin and a longer acting insulin as far as the basal insulin concern the best basal insulin is the one which has got the longest acting and no peak number 2 number 3 more predictable action that is pkpd that no pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamic should be the same intraday intra subject interday so all these three issues should be there and if you can fit the bill then probably this is the best insulin that you can think of but then probably the u300 insulin which i'm going to talk is going to uh, set the ball rolling for that now it it just is a small innovative thinking there's nothing great in that actually in fact what they have done is that Uh, they instead of giving you know usually glargine lantus dr uh, <coughs> sandeep julka was talking about is 100 iu but whereas when you make it a 300 iu the whole pharmacokinetics to change to a great extent now in fact this is what we used to think about you know in the 35 years ago when we said that the you know, higher the even the regular insulin the higher the uh, you know the concentration of insulin the pharmacokinetics will slightly change they become slightly longer in acting slightly longer in starting action as well same thing happened but this is a different way of looking into that see the same amount of units that you give it's a small quantity of insulin when it is subjected into when it is injected into the subcutaneous tissue you could see that the surface area of the amount of insulin that is there is reduced and so that slower absorption Suppose you got the deposit of insulin that has been in the subcutaneous is larger, so more area for absorption will be there, and that's a very simple mechanism that they have done, and then they were able to get the change in pharmacokinetics and one in more predictable insulin. Now there is a proof here. This is basically in a non-diabetic population because we need to do these tests in a non-diabetic population. You give a subcutaneous injection, 
and then it causes hypoglycemia right so in order to prevent hypoglycemia they start infusing the glucose and maintain the blood glucose to the normal level and in that milieu they have calculated the insulin as well as the glucose infusion how much of infusion what they found is they compare the insulin deglutec the other second generation basal insulin they found this a small peak in the deglutec and that is uh, confirmed by glucose infusion that is higher and if you can see the green dots you can see that it's straight and there is the deglutec there is a small ups and downs are there so that means a more predictable insulin more flat insulin and that is the best thing so that it will reduce hypoglycemia and also the weight gain can be done and this particular insulin insulin glargin 300 has based upon several studies that have been over the years and then you can see that they compared with glargin 100 and as well as insulin deglutec as well so let us see what is happening in this one of the things that they have done is that addition trial they have done from the uh, son of a company 1 2 3 you can see that it is basically in in uh, insulin naive patients with oral drugs and then you can say addition 2 is basal insulin plus oad and then addition 1 is basically basal insulin plus meal time insulin that is basal plus insulin what dr sandeep was talking about and also they have done studies addition 4 and 5 in Jap- in, in type 1 diabetics and as well as uh, as well as in japanese patients i'm sorry yeah. and and even type 1 diabetics as well now if we just comparing this addition trial they what they have done is that they compared the the 300 iu insulin with 100 iu insulin glargin and what you could see that end of one year the 12th month you can see that similar action profile can be seen here you can see that it looks like the green and purple are apart it's actually it's in, in a slide it happens like that but the difference between that is 0.1 hpa1c not more than that 7.2 with u100 and 7.3 with u300 uh, there's nothing else but you, you look at the the left side of the right side of the screen you can see that the difference that makes is both all any time hypoglycemia as well as nocturnal hypoglycemia which are reduced to the great extent and that's what we need to look into that same efficacy with reduced hypoglycemia that's what we need to that now why is it you are talking so much about hypoglycemia is a very very important thing that the fear of hypoglycemia the moment you get one hypoglycemic episode then what happens is that the fear that that is created amongst people will not allow them to uh, stick to the prescription that you have given and they will not allow you to do the titration and they will not be happy when you are trying to do that glycemic control tighter control so ultimately absolutely no glucose control will be there and lead to complications as well so if you have an insulin which can be having least hypoglycemia that fear is not there and that can be done so one of the best things happens is that was in fact uh, uh, dr sanjeev shah was talking about the titration now all the rct is like what has done even in this uh, u300 is about 12 weeks but in practice what i see is within 4 to 6 weeks we can fix the dose of insulin the reason why is that the the titration period is the one very important insulin because 80% of the effect or 80% of the reduction in hb1c comes during the titration period and if you can fix the dose among that you can just try it once a week that is enough you don't need to do every day or two once a week if you do that there is evidence based actually once a week titration of insulin by taking care of the fasting blood glucose by glucometer and then you can adjust the dose so you can see that in 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 a, a early response predicts long term glycemic control within 12 weeks and the moment you have a fixed dose at the, at the titration period the same most often happens is that same dose can be persisted for next one year or so that's called maintenance period actually so these are the two things and then if you have a hypoglycemia in titration period it doubles the hypoglycemic episodes in future and also and early hypoglycemia increase the risk of treatment discontinuation as well now here if you see that there is a bright study which is called as bright study which is done by the uh, the uh, the company not sanofi that um their opposite company then we can see that they have compared uh, glargin 300 with insulin deglutec 100 iu 100 iu of deglutec and what they have found is that at the end of 6 months you can see that both are having the same efficacy that's one thing you can see that both the insulin both second generations and efficacy is the same but what is the difference that makes during titration period 
is that when you use U300 during the titration period, the hypoglycemia any time and as well as nocturnal hypoglycemic episodes are quite low and that is the reason if you can have a low hypoglycemia during titration period and that is going to be beneficial for our patients. And this is the same thing what I projected and both nocturnal and as well as daytime hypoglycemic episodes are very low. Well, there's one more study which is called as CONCLUDE study and uh, you know, the unfortunately, if you can see that in the down here, they can 16 weeks and 36 weeks, they have used faulty glucometers. And whereas in the, only in the last second maintenance period, the 36 weeks, you can see that appropriate glucometers have been used. And what they have found is that between the thing, there is no difference between for the hypoglycemic episodes. The, if you look into the, the both bright and conclude studies, you can see that bright has basically done for the non-inferiority and then it has achieved it. And then the conclude study where Deglutec 100 was unable to show the uh, superiority, which is actually the study uh, uh, opinion actually. Now, this is a very interesting study. This is a real world data. You know that Dr. Sanjeev Shah was also talking about the real world data is very, very important. And this is called as ATOS study, about 4,000 plus patients in Almost about more, the close to one third of our patients are from India. And what has happened is that if you can see that in this, um, <clears throat> uh, in this participants, if you can see that by adding U300 of Glargine, you are able to get almost two HbA1c reduction. That is from baseline 9.28 to almost 7.5 and less. And there is uh, uh, the blood glucose comes down by less than 65. And then you can see that there are hardly any, you know, there's hardly 0.13% of hypoglycemic episodes. But most important thing is by the end of six months, about 25% of the patients were able to achieve the glycemic control less than seven and close to 50% by the end of 12 months. And this is what is very important to know that. But look at the, uh, the amount of insulin that they require actually. At the end of three months, you could see that there is, there is uh, from baseline to three months, there is an increase of five units of insulin during titration period. It's not exactly titration period, but like, like what we see in RCT, but there is there. And then after that, in sixth month and twelfth month, there's not much of increase. It's about three units increase further at the end of 12 years. Totally, there is increase about from 14 to 23 units. There's about nine units increases there. And this is the beauty of having this U300 insulin, where the titration period, it can fix the dose to a great extent. And you know, when you talk about timing, the, the last few years, uh, we have been talking too much, I mean, a lot of importance has given to TIR, that is time in range. And by doing flash glucose monitoring in this particular study, compared to Glargine 300 and, uh, 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 and uh, IDEC 100, what they found is that efficacy is the same, but the nocturnal hypoglycemia is far less with U300, probably because a more predictable action is there. And then this is another interesting study. Those people who have been on a co-formulation of twice a day, they were converted into basal insulin at bedtime and gave short-acting insulin log in the morning and supper. And then what they have found is that they were able to increase the, uh, uh, you know, uh, when, when you go for this using U300 with a short-acting insulin log, the TIR is increased from 73 to 84, and look at the hypoglycemic caps, which is reduced to a great extent. This is what an advantage that you get with when you go for this. And it's going to be safe. You know, we are talking about the vulnerable population, that is the elderly people, and as well as the uh, renal insufficiency patients. And time and again, in many studies that have been done with these population are shown equal efficacy or better efficacy with the least hypoglycemic episodes so, are no increased hypoglycemic episodes has been found in all the studies. And then even in the exposure to Glargine 100 has been known to us. And then the same, there was an exposure about 246 exposure to uh, the GLA uh, U300 and they found no problems at all. Both at the, the results suggest that no safety issue the use of Glargine during pregnancy because there are no adverse events or increased congenital anomalies. They are as good as non-diabetic population itself. So it's safe even in pregnancy, but it's not recommended yet in the guidelines, but it is safe. And also the, the, the pen that we use also make a difference, you know, because the effort that has to be taken by the patient should be great, actually. If we can reduce the effort and it is easy to use, the less force to be used and then less amount of insulin inject, 
and that can be a very good ins insulin syringe that we can give, the pen that we can give. And this U300 pen can achieve that. And let me conclude to say that there is, there are, if at all you got a chance to use U300, there are so many advantages in the form of least hypoglycemia, more predictable action, efficacious, and also you could see that there is no increase in weight gain. And these are the things. And thank you for patient hearing.